Oh my gosh, welcome back. Come on in, sit down, get your coffee or liquor or just some water. Y'all know I do coconut water, but sit down, sit down. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. A little iced coffee. Okay, welcome back to the It's Carolyn Gray channel. I know last week we took a little bit of a break because it was a couple of holidays popping off. So I figured, listen, take the day to rest. Y'all ain't dealing with me. Y'all been with family, relaxing, and do whatever you believe in. So I was like, let's take a little break this week, right? But I've been noticing a couple of things since I've started this channel and then been connecting with the community that it's, you know, developing, which is amazing, okay? First and foremost, an amazing community is developing on this channel, and I'm very excited about it. I feel very humbled. Um, but what I've noticed some feedback between here and Instagram is that people are entering a space where they're kind of new to fashion coming to this channel, um, that they're starting over what their individual style might be, that they're learning about fashion, that they're getting into it more. There's a couple of... Um, requests that I've received that I'm going to be doing. Um, I'm always open to requests on types of videos and whatnot, but I've noticed that there's a, a, there's a demographic here that is foundational. You know, we're starting from a new foundation. I think this is really exciting. So I figured it might be a good idea if I do a little series about the foundation of styling, um, styling yourself, foundation of fashion, the basics of fashion, fashion one-on-one, whatever we feel this is, you know, at the end of it, I want to start off with the foundation. And truly, truly, I feel like the beginning of any type of style when it comes to fashion, it is, it, it's a look within yourself. You know, yes, there's some, you know, those other variables and we'll get to that. But I want to talk about the foundation of styling yourself. And first and foremost, it's about understanding and loving yourself and figuring out what your message is to the world. Because, you know, your your outfit kind of is the statement that you enter a space with, right? So what is your expression with that? Um, and what I want to start with is just understanding who you are as a person and looking at yourself in the mirror and understanding what you're seeing loving what you're seeing and figuring out how you want to move forward with what you see um y'all know i wrote notes because i have to stay i have to stay focused because if i don't write the notes then we go into the other areas and whatnot right okay so understanding yourself is first and foremost you know you going into the fashion space, it is very surface level, right? You know, looking at it from the outside point of view, it's consumer based, it's a, it's a whole lot of political situations that I'm not gonna get into, but you can get lost into it if you don't understand who you are first. So, you know, it's always important to do a bit of reflection when you want to revive your style, when you want to figure out what your style is, reflection and, and confirming yourself is number one. Love yourself, have confidence in yourself because the confidence is what really brings out the entire look. You could put on a trash bag, but if your confidence is top tier, then we going, th oh, it's avant-garde, bitch. You get what I'm saying? Excuse my French, but literally, not all the French, one part of that French, but literally your confidence can carry out whatever style you have on. Um, so really, when you take a look in the mirror and you see yourself for all the curves or non-curves, because I'm a girl that's up and down, girl, I don't got no, I don't have no hips, a little bit, but like literally looking at yourself and saying, okay, this is what I got. And I'm in love with it. And this is what I'm going to do with it. And here's what I'm going to say. Okay. So when we take a look in the mirror. What is the first thought that we should have? Hey beautiful. First of all. <laughs> first of all. Hey beauty. Secondly. Alright. What is my body type? What is my canvas? Right. Understanding 
what you feel your favorite asset is. Whatever your favorite asset is, is your best feature. You make your best feature, okay? Let's, for instance, say, what is my favorite thing about me? My decolletage, right now I have a, um, a, a monitor on, but my decolletage and my legs. I love to have my legs out. I rarely have both of them out at the same time, but one or the other, I always love to show, right? And understanding what that is for you and roll with it, show it off. It's your favorite thing. Maybe dress around it too, right? It's one of the things you're going to dress around. So when you're looking at your body, you want to understand what your body type is. And then we go from there. Fitting is one of the most important things about your style. And here's the reality. A lot of us are not going to go and get our entire wardrobe custom made, right? We're going to go to stores, online boutiques, and we're going to be shopping from a more or less generalized sized collection, right? So understanding what our figures are showing and how we want to dress them, but more importantly, how do we make sure that it fits to us? Now, I told you I'm a big believer in getting things tailored, right? I want to walk you through fitting yourself and what does that look like? And then being able to go on a website or a store size guide and understanding what your size is and how it needs to fit. Because we look at these charts, right? And they're like bust, inseam, uh, shoulder width. And it's important that we understand our personal sizing. So when we look at these charts, we understand where we fall, if we need to go up in size or down in size, right? And get things tailored or not. And you want to start off with a measuring tape, measuring roll, a fabric measuring tape. And you want to go through all the areas of your body and write them down in your phone. Put them in your notes. Keep them handy. And what you want to do, you want to actually have someone that can help you. But if you're by yourself, it's manageable as well. You just got to be really nifty and use your toes, use, your, use, use both hands and figure it out, right? But you want to make sure that you understand your bust. Your bust is the area underneath your, your bosom. This is for the ladies and for men. It's right underneath your bosom for your ladies and around the circumference of your body. And you want to make sure that you put the measuring tape in the center and you want to wrap it around your body and get make sure that you read just a little bit of space, maybe a thumb width in there. And that is your measurement. OK, when you want to add in your cup size, then you level up. And most of us, most of us wear the wrong cup size to begin with. But if you go into a lingerie um, store, undergarment store, get measured. So you understand exactly what your sizing is. So from there, you want to go to your waist, your highest part, right? And then do the same thing. Wrap around the circumference and that's your waist size. You move down a little bit further and you get to your hip area. That does include a little bit of the top of your booty, okay? That's your hip size. You want to get that circumference as well. Now, Sometimes if you're doing things custom made, you want to get the measurement of the, the round, the roundest, bottomest part of your booty and include that in your sizing chart as well. But usually what's on general size chart is your bust, your waist, your hips, your inseam, and mostly when you're doing any type of like jacket fitting also, you want to get your shoulder width. So getting this outermost part matching to the outermost part of your shoulders here on the tip that is your shoulder width okay and when it comes to the inseam we take the measuring tape and put the tip of it right at the top of your crotch and let it fall straight line close to your body to the bottom of your foot or you can stop at your ankle bone and that is your inseam i am an inseam of 30 i can wear an inseam of 27 but it's like Fitted, slightly cropped, annoys me a bit. I like all of my inseams to fall at 30 or 32. So I can do some measuring if I want to wear heels or not with that particular pant skirt. 
So literally you want to understand your measurements and whenever you're doing things that are custom made you're going you're going to obviously get into the nitty gritty of the sizing like the circumference of your thigh the the circumference of your arm all the way down you know these are the things that get really detailed when you're getting something custom made but when you're working with a tailor that's doing that or a seamstress that's doing that they're going to take those measurements so they can make sure that the product that they create for you is the best fit right so when it comes to a tailor, sometimes you want to go into a, a, an establishment, you don't want to get fitted and you don't have time, make sure that you have your measurements so you can tell the tailor, hey, these pants are a waist of 32, I need them to be a 27, can you do that for me? But I always suggest putting on the clothing to make sure that you understand how you want it to fit so they understand what they need to do for you. But understanding your measurements are really helpful when it comes to a seamstress or tailor helping you make sure that your clothes and your wardrobe fit. So it's, it's really important to understand what your body type is, how you want your clothes to hang on you, and understanding your sizing. Because when we're in this large world of shopping, it can get really intimidating. And it's really just a number. The size does not define you. I think a year or so ago, I was a size eight in most things or a size medium to large. Now I'm a small size four, size six. To me, I don't feel great about my size difference going down or higher. I care about my clothes fitting me in the moment that I'm in and that in, the, in my life at that time. You know, if I'm a little bit more thicker, okay, great. Like I'm gonna go up in size. I want my clothes to fit a little bit looser. I'm not the type of girl to wear things that are so close to the body, but sometimes I will, but I always balance it out. So understanding your sizing, the tailoring of your body, and how you want to envelope it in whatever garment you choose to wear, it is for you and it is approved by you and the essence of you. These are major factors. If you don't have this understanding, nothing you put on will feel right. It might look right, it might look good, but to feel confident in what your style is and have a personal style, the foundation is understanding and loving who you are as a person and understanding and loving your body and dressing your body, okay? Going into, you know, understanding you, what you love, what your statement is, is what is your signature? And I'm not talking about clothing yet. I'm talking about your signature fragrance. What do you love to smell like? What are your favorite scents? Is it musk? Is it floral? Is it citrusy? Is it nothing? You know, what is your signature scent? What is your signature crown? When I say crown, I mean hairstyle. I think growing up in the black community as a black woman, our hair is a statement. It is it is how we frame our face, <laughs> you know, it is it is being bald, it is being, you know, with curly, all types of kinky texture coils. It is having straight hair if you want. If you're into the creamy crack, listen, it is what it is. I got a little creamy crack on the sides because when I was starting to work out, you see, I didn't want to just lift up and just be all up, sound like the hedgehog type of situation, you know what I'm saying? So I had to lay them things down with some creamy crack, but now... I digress, it's at a length that I don't need the creamy crack anymore. But, you know, making sure that our hair is also a statement and keeping it up, making sure that it's healthy, making sure that it's moisturized and that, you know, we go to the salon and we get our trims, that we, we make sure that everything is framed for us. Understanding the face shape and what you want to stay. I wanted my eyebrows to be super exposed. Why? Because I spend so much time on my eyebrows, I feel like my eyebrows Frame my face. It is me. So I want to make sure that you can see my eyebrows at all times. So that meant getting some fringe that is way above my eyebrows. Now when my hair grows out, I will wear my hair to the sides and the middle part because I want my face to be framed and my eyebrows to be out. So understanding our signature look from our scent to our hair. And you know, you want to go to a, a hairstylist that and I don't think a lot of people talk about this. My hairstylist is Lorraine. Y'all know I have a video about Lorraine. I feel like we are two peas in a pod. Lorraine has good 
She has amazing energy. She has growing hands. She's a type of spouse that will tell you no. Like if I go in there and say, listen, Lorraine, I want lime green, neon green in the front. She might say yes to me, but she also will tell me, okay, well, let's take a look at that. What does that look like? You know, um, what does the care of that look like? What is the state of your hair now? The health of your hair now? You want to work with someone who cares about the health of your hair and will tell you, I don't know if this is going to look your best because of X, Y, and Z reasons. Because this is a professional, right? So they, you want to make sure that someone isn't just taking your hair requests and saying, okay, I'll do what you say. You want to work with someone who, was, who is going to thoughtfully do your hair and say, I think this is going to work amazing on you because of the frame of your face, because of your skin tone, because of the energy that you have, because this is the job that you have, all the above. I told her for months I wanted a mullet. She, she had to take some time thinking about it. But I told her, listen, I think it's going to work. We already have a short bang. I think the fringe and the way that it looks, you know, the, the, the history behind uh, the wolf cut, like, I think I can really pull this off. And she did it. And she won't give anyone else the haircut because she knows that it is my signature style. It is the essence of me. It is, it is me. It is me. And, you know, that is the type of person that I've always worked with. Vaughn is another hairstylist that I worked with in the past. That's from Buffalo, New York. Vicky from Styles New York. These are people who I trusted with my hair because they took care of the health. They understood my face and how to frame it. They told me no when I needed to hear it because they cared about my hair and how I present myself at all times. So find a hairstylist that will really work with you to understand who you are, what you need to pull off, how to take care of your hair, and to care about you at the end of the day. Okay? So hair is signature. Your scent is signature. Sometimes spending a little bit more extra dollars on your scent, if that's your scent, then you'll carry it if it mixes with your chemistry. Sometimes Chanel number no. 5 doesn't work with one person, whereas another person, it doesn't smell like powder baby powder in a diaper it might really smell like something that's not baby powder no shade to chanel but I, maybe that was not a good um uh that was not a good example but you know what i'm saying right you know what i'm saying what i'm saying is understanding your body chemistry and how it works with different scents and what you love to smell just on you know from your outside perspective point of view and how it blends with your body i love darker musky wooder and woodier and and sometimes a bit more masculine scents they just work for me and they actually smell different on me than they do other people so um i tend to wear byredo um oh wow i forgot the name of the byredo scent that i wear this is so unprofessional it just escaped me because my neighbor is staring at me from across the way and i don't appreciate it but whatever we're just gonna get into it but making sure that you understand your scent and your signature, right? Another thing that I wanted to cover is this, you know, I want to make sure that this is received well. Cleanliness. Now, I grew up in a Caribbean American black home. Caribbean African American home. <laughs> That's the type of house I grew up in. My mom's from the Caribbean, Dutch Caribbean Islands. My dad is from Maryland, Baltimore. He is mixed. <clears throat> and, you know, not my father, but my mom's side, you know, having straight hair, long hair, um, is a definition of beauty. You know, so this is a whole other topic, but, you know, in some communities, People are taught to only accept themselves if they have a certain structured look. I did not feel beautiful unless my hair was straight and long down my back. But when I came to New York at 17, going on 18, I started to play with my style. I made a mistake one night in the dorm. I used to cut my own hair because I didn't have a stylist at the time here. And I cut right down the middle and I chopped off. Like, the length of my hair was here, I chopped off my hair here. 
So I had to get a bob from there. And then from there, I went and got a short haircut like Holly Berry. And my mom was like, you cut all of my hair off. Like, what were you thinking? Oh, my God, you cut all of my beautiful hair. I'm like, first of all, it's my hair. It's on my head. But because she birthed me, she feels like she has rights to my hair. But I started to realize that I liked playing with my hair with different styles. You know, long hair did not define me. I could pull off short hair and my face would come out. And then Vaughn left to go back to Bo uh, to Buffalo and I didn't have a stylist at the time. I got so sad and depressed that I decided to just go natural and cut my hair super short. And the first time <clears throat> that I cut my hair, I did not like it. I hated it. My curls, I did not understand. It looked frizzy. It looked like an afro. It looked unkept. And I shared my thoughts with my father. I said, maybe I need, just need some gel, like smooth it down, like make it look pretty. He was like, that is your hair. That is your hair. I did not do my job as a father if you didn't love your natural hair. And I'm feeling like I'm about to get emotional. But it taught me that my father did not believe in these, these I ideas about women having straight hair to feel beautiful. He said, I didn't do my job as a father if you're coming out as an adult not loving your natural curls and I realized I needed to change my approach so all that to say cleanliness is literally cleanliness it is not meaning to say your hair has to be smoothed down a certain way it has to be slicked back it has to do x y and z you have to have um acne less skin like no when I say cleanliness I mean clean shampooed healthy hair when i say cleanliness i mean free of stains on your clothes if you can help it you know if you have a large food stain you're gonna end up looking sloppy right so having something to always make sure that your clothes are spotless and steamed I, i'm probably a little wrinkly today but you know going out in the world with wrinkled clothing i feel like the new generation doesn't know how to work an iron, but at least get a steamer, you know what I'm saying? Making sure you don't have wrinkles in your clothes. It is a statement. It shows that you care about yourself. Being a clean person is another part of style that is a foundation, a foundational piece that a lot of people skip over. And they wonder why sometimes they don't always look put together in their look. That they, you know, that goes along with confidence, taking care of yourself. Taking care of what you eat and put into your body is cleanliness. So, you know, I'm a big believer in that. You know, making sure that your hair is clean and kept and healthy for whatever texture it is. Making sure that your clothes are without stains or without tears and making sure that we sew them back together. Um, and making sure that we have clothes that don't have wrinkles because it looks like you just balled up your stuff Throw it in the bag and put it on and say, hey, I'm here today. No, care about yourself. Take time to invest in pieces that you want to take care of over time and make sure they hang well on you. So cleanliness is a big factor. You know, all in all, confidence, how your clothes fit, how you feel about yourself, having a signature scent or hairstyle, um, and being clean, respecting yourself I feel like you know cleanliness is a form of respect to self you don't go into a family member's house and make it into a pigsty you respect it for the space that it is a, a feeling of home a feeling of nourishment a feeling of love you respect your space by making sure that you're tidy and you keep things in a certain order or that you respect other people's home and don't make a mess of it do the same with you and your body. Don't make a mess of yourself. It's disrespectful. And it is a part of style altogether. So, literally, <laughs> I'm pretty sure you're like, okay, I thought we were really going to get into some fashion points. No, we will. We will. We will talk about proportions. We'll talk about skin tone matching to certain colorways. We'll talk about all those things. But I think when people think about fashion and defining their personal style they go right to a designer boutique or they go into Zara and they buy all the, the latest things that they have on the floor style 
starts with the essence of you as a being. Loving your body and understanding it, measuring it to ensure that you wear your things that feel comfortable, that feel good to you, um, that you understand what size your undergarments need to be. These are important things to piece together your personal style. Understanding what you like to smell and smelling like that. Understanding the chemistry of your body. Understanding cleanliness is a sign of respect to your body. You only get one body, one life. You might as well respect it and give it what it needs to be nourished. So, yes, this is a fashion-related video because the foundation of style is personal, it's confidence, it's respect of self, it's love of self, and it's understanding what exactly your statement is. So, lovers, that concludes the first episode. I appreciate y'all tuning in. And if you made it this far, don't forget to subscribe like comment below tell me what your thoughts are if you have any other questions about these foundational pieces please do not hesitate to hit me up next week we're going to get into undergarments we're going to get into skin tone versus colorways and a couple other things and then we're going to get into how to style proportions it's going to be fun i'm excited because I feel like I get to go to the center of the why I love fashion so much. And it is because it is what I define it to be. And that is the, that is the most important lesson I want you to take from this video. So, holla at your girl. I love y'all. Thanks for tuning in and I'll see y'all next week.